understanding on, on decisions around both the magnitude and the pace of the constitutional uh, change. We are interested in you know, understanding uh, how and why decisions about the process and the substance uh, of constitutional change were made. What were the, the consequences of particular of these particular choices? And what are the what are the insights that can be gained from, from these particular case studies? Well, the idea is that uh, uh, many states that uh, undergo constitutional change um, have a choice uh, whether to uh, make a major change uh, all at once with all the excitement that comes from uh, doing that uh, or whether to make the change uh, more gradually. One of the factors that uh, uh, encourage decision makers or people uh, to make one of those choices or the other and what are some of the consequences that follow from those uh, choices in terms of involving the people, uh, in discussions about constitutional reform, uh, in terms of actually feeling as if everybody owns the constitutional changes that have been made, uh, and in terms of implementing them uh, effectively in the future. Um, most uh, people would say these days that if major constitutional change is occurring, there needs to be an opportunity for public uh, input and public participation. The product that out, comes out of a constitutional process is nearly ground, necessarily grounded on the history the norms, the values, and the pol politics of the politics of the moment, and the opportunities and challenges that are uh, that are there at any any constitutional moment that uh, uh, that might arise. To even discern the presence of that moment, uh, where um, wide space is uh, has been opened up in order for really substantial uh, constitutional reform. of constitution building are increasingly global in character. This in terms not just of learning from the experiences of other countries, but also because there are many global actors involved, even in such a national project such as the building of a new constitution. Another lesson I think that's important is that even though there is this global aspect to national constitution building, there is, you cannot overplay that international or global side because there are local or national constraints on any particular constitution building process. It's important uh, to uh, look at the experiences of other countries uh, while you are doing your own uh, charter change uh, amendments. Uh, there is no such thing as one size uh, fits all. Um, uh, that's true. Uh, you need to look at your own problems and you need to devise uh, your own solutions. Uh, positive experiences. I like to think of uh, constitution building and constitution amending the process as something very, very positive. 
it is positive because uh, even though political parties will have different ideologies, at the end of the day, the constitution is a living, breathing thing that we have to live with that should work for bettering the quality of life of all the citizens. For example, like Burma, uh, we have many ethnic groups mm -hmm. and then the people. So we would, we want them to involve in the process until and unless they are not able to involve in constitution building process, then they would not feel that this constitution belongs to them. Each country will have their own constitutional history. At the end of the day, uh, people who want real constitutional reform build on creating that movement. Uh, people who want real change to happen in their country and to have a constitutional framework that embodies values that they hold dear, they contribute to that moment. But it cannot be them alone. It, they will have to capture the popular imagination of the people. So how do you discern that moment? I think uh, you know when it's very right, but at the end of the day, again, uh, things might not go the way you want it to be. So there's politics, especially elite politics, that are more powerful than probably initiatives coming from the middle or at the center. And, uh, but then again, there can be real opportunities where you have a, a significant uh, coalition of uh, powerful enough forces to really, uh, to really see through uh, a meaningful constitutional change. In those countries, of course, the international aspect has been provided by the advice that international idea has been provided for the informative and participatory phases of the constituent process. A major problem in the constitution building process overall, it all depends on this uh, political motivations of the drafters. Sometimes uh, all those motivations uh, could be very like self-driven and self-ambitious ma manner. So that's why it is very important to build uh, a good constitutional design and architecture generally and to build a system that could filter out these personal ambitions. When you put that in the constitution, you put that in the fundamental law, and no ordinary legislation can reverse that. So that's how important the role of the Constitution in terms of uh, maintaining, sustaining democracy, rule of law, and human rights. Well, the role of Constitution and democracy is very related to each other. And it's very important because it is uh, uh, reflections of national consensus on the rules of the game. Uh, in a country. The comparative uh, approach enables one to locate one's country with some more objectivity and also some more clarity from the lens of the issues that were considered important in other contexts or uh, the processes that were undertaken. This could all inform uh, the politics of the day that we have now or even the challenges of the future. Uh, constitutional reform is an ongoing agenda. It won't go away because no constitution is permanent. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, it's very important to continue with this kind of learning process. I think uh, many of the, uh, the choices uh, made by different countries in terms of uh, you know, whether to choose incremental uh, forms of constitutional reforms or to you know, go with this so-called Big Bang approach is uh, is a function, I mean, of the political his history, the culture, and the uh, you know the the co concrete, specific local conditions, uh, the dynamics between you know the uh, the opposition and the government. Okay, 
Okay, well, I think uh, the first lesson that comes across from, you know, we have 20 very diverse cases, but in all of them, you can see that the modalities through which the Constitution was changed, whether that was over time, incrementally, or all at once, um, is, and, and also with regards to uh, changing the substance of the Constitution. We spoke a lot about limiting the powers of the President. The solutions to these problems have been very much driven by the context of the country in question and its legal and constitutional history. It, the, um, the key, key things that I've, uh, I've seen might be helpful for us in the future is trying to understand the different players, the different actors, understanding um, how they actually influence the process. Um, in this forum, we've been talking about the processes, but those who are engaged, the different actors, uh, are we able to uh, gather together and talk about those interests and how they influence the outcome of a constitutional amendment or a revision or even a new constitution? people would say these days that if major constitutional change is occurring, there needs to be an opportunity for public uh, input and public participation. Um, but you know, depending on whether you're making a new constitution or amending an existing one, the opportunities may be different. Um, and in any event, there's a real question about how you properly involve the public. <laughs>